Hi everyone, today I'm actually going to be talking about more microbiology related topics. And this one I'm going to talk about the cell wall and um, the components of it and how it differentiates two general classes of bacteria. Okay, so I posted a video looking at bacterial anatomy. This was the actual diagram that I used. If you t didn't take a look at that video, go ahead and take a look at it. Um, the only structure that I am going to really be honing in on on this video is the cell wall. And based on classification of a gram positive or a gram negative, I'm also going to talk about the membranes. Okay, So I will post the link um, or post the video um, card so you can go ahead and click on that. So this is just showing you, here's um, just looking at the bacteria. This is showing you the cell envelope. So a cell envelope, just as a reminder, um, includes the membrane and the cell wall. We so the cell wall is called the peptidoglycan or murine. You may see it as either, but we talk about peptidoglycan. And I'm going to explain in the next slide what peptidoglycan is composed of. All right, so the cell wall or the peptidoglycan is a very rigid structure. So you know how plants have cell walls? The plant cell walls are composed of cellulose, which are, you know, glucose molecules attached end to end. The bacterial cell wall is not composed of cellulose. It's actually composed of alternating units um, called NAG and NAM, okay? NAG and NAM. They actually have longer names, but we call it NAG and NAM for short. So in gram-positive versus gram-negative bacteria. So gram-negative, they have very thin cell walls, and I'll show you a picture of that in a second. We see here that gram-negative has cross-linkings going on between their NAG-NAM chains. So you see these cross-links? Okay, they're directly linked together. In the actual gram positive, there's something else going on. We have bridging, so we have peptide interbridging occurring. So you can see those peptide interbridge actually going on here. So we have our bridging occurring here. So the gram positive has a lot of layers of peptidoglycan, so they have to be bridged, not just linked together. And the question is, how are they linked? Okay, so the, the amino acids that are connected together, they're DNL structures that if you take organic chemistry, you'll understand what DNL means. Um, in the gram negative, remember they're linked, gram positive, they're bridged. But at the end of the day, what causes them to come together? These NAG-NAM chains, what brings them together? Well, there's an enzyme called transpeptidase, okay, transpeptidase. Oh, excuse my handwriting. Transpeptidase, as we can see here, is an enzyme that actually um, does a process called transpeptidation. It will bring those peptides together that will help form those linkages, those bridges, those bonds. And they're actually found in both the gram positive and the gram negative. Now transpeptidase is needed to link the cell wall subunits. All right, so in order to make proper peptidoglycan, you need transpeptidase function. Here's the thing. So have you heard of antibiotics like penicillin um, or any of its family members? They actually block cell wall function. And how they block cell wall function in the bacteria is by knocking out the function of transpeptidase. If transpeptidase does not work, you can't make the cell wall and that's how the bacteria dies. Because you remember the cell wall in bacteria is essential for bacterial survival it helps them withstand the osmotic pressures and other hostile conditions. So if they lack it, they're going to be in trouble. I just want to let you know that little key fact. All right, so there's two general classes of bacteria. We have the gram positive and the gram negative, and it's based on the um, cell wall, of course, the peptidoglycan. If you take a look here, this is a gram-positive bacteria. This is showing you a very 
simplistic uh, diagram of the peptidoglycan, we see that there are multi layers of the peptidoglycan here. Another thing to note is that there is only one plasma membrane present in the gram positive, okay, and that's found on the internal surface. And you know, these purples and these uh, pink, fuchsia, magenta ish color, those are the NAGs and NAMs. That's alternating units that are bonded together, okay? Remember, in the gram positive, there's a peptide interbridge that occurs to link the actual cell wall together. The gram negative is a little bit different. Okay, so the gram negative, yes, they do have a peptidoglycan layer, but it's a much simpler, thinner layer. But what I'm trying to show you here, unlike the gram positive, the gram negative has two membranes. We have an inner membrane and an outer membrane that actually has varying structures. So the gram negative has additional things that the gram positive doesn't have. But remember, there's a very thin peptidoglycan layer in the gram negative. All right, so this picture is showing you um, more details reg regarding the cell wall um, and also regarding the cell envelope of the gram negative. So if we take a look here, we have our inner membrane present in the gram negative, and we have our outer membrane. Now the outer membrane has other structures associated with it that we will not see in the gram positive. The first thing is the LPS. Now I discussed the LPS in one of my other videos. I will put the um, link above so if you want to go ahead and actually click on it to see about the LPS you can. But remember the LPS contributes to a pathogenic property of the gram negative, particularly the lipid A structure of the LPS. So you can go and take a look at that. Another thing that the gram negative has that the gram positive does not have are channels or proteins in their outer membrane. Um, particularly here, these, this, these proteins are called porins. Porins does various, they do various things um, for the bacteria. Um, and it can maybe aid in their survival. Um, you have pumps that may be present in these outer membranes and can pump out antibiotics. So the gram-negative outer membrane has a lot of things involved with it. Now the peptidoglycan is found in between the two layers and they're very thin. Um, this space where the peptidoglycan is found is called the periplasmic space. The gram negatives have a true periplasmic space because it has two membranes um, that the space can be found. Now, another thing to mention that the gram negative has that the gram positive doesn't have is these lipoproteins, the murine lipoproteins. Some may know it as bronze lipoprotein. They kind of help stabilize or anchor that peptidoglycan to the outer membrane. And this, in turn, can impact other things that's there. If you do not have these lipoproteins functioning, you may have some things going wrong um, in the gram negative, particularly looking at the cell envelope or the outer membrane. All right, so these are some structures that are found in the gram negative, that periplasmic space, the thin peptidoglycan layer, the outer membrane that contains the LPS, and the porins, okay? So these are all structures that are associated with the gram negative. All right, so I like this diagram because it kind of compares the gram positive and the gram negative. So this is the gram negative, here's the gram positive. Remember the gram positive has one membrane and it has multi layers of the peptidoglycan cell wall. And just as a recap, Peptidoglycan is composed of NAG, NAM subunits. In the gram positive, they're bridged together. So the one thing that the gram positive has, the gram negative lack, is the tachoic acids. The tachoic acids, if they're attached to the actual membrane, is called lipotachoic acids. If they actually haven't extended all the way down to the membrane, we just call it tachoic acids. You may see it as TA, or lipotachoic acids is LTA. They are not present in the gram negative, okay? So here is showing you once again the gram negative has an inner membrane, an outer membrane, 
that periplasmic space that has that very thin layer of the cell wall. That cell wall is kind of stabilized and linked to the outer membrane through that lipoprotein that's present. You remember there's lipopolysaccharides on the outer membrane of the gram negative as well as porins. I go ahead and look at that bacterial anatomy lecture so I, you can get some more information regarding these structures that's present in the gram negative. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about a procedure, a very important procedure called the gram staining procedure that's actually used to differentiate between the gram positives and the gram negatives. All right, so basically the first thing that we do in the staining procedure is you will take bacteria and place it on the slide. You may not know if it's gram positive or negative just by looking at it, okay? Now bacteria generally are colorless. So if you look through the microscope, they both gram positive and gram negative will look the exact same, which is colorless. So the first thing you have to do is make sure the bacteria is adhered to the slide so we can use heat fixing, some um, labs or some individuals may use alcohol as a form of fixing. But what you do is actually attach those organisms to the slide. Remember the gram positive has a very thick peptidoglycan layer where this, the gram negative has very thin. So when we apply our crystal violet um, onto the slides after heat fixing, both the gram positive and the gram negative will actually take in, as you can see here, the purple color, okay? That crystal violet is purple. Now we see different times here, um, different labs use different times, but I mean, these are pretty standard right here. So after the gram staining procedure, after you add the crystal violet, both the gram negative and the gram positive are both purple. Now, if you have a thick layer of peptidoglycan, more of the stain will be really embedded throughout the peptidoglycan. The next thing that we need to do is to make sure it is complex, that that stain is really driven in and complex to the peptidoglycan. So the next stage would be adding a mordant. All right, the mordant is iodine. Okay, so the iodine will basically adhere firmly to that peptidoglycan layer and if that crystal violet is on there it will drive in that stain pretty good so if you have a lot of peptidoglycan you're going to have a stronger um, firm complexing going on whereas the gram negative remember has a very thin cell wall so there's not going to be a lot to adhere or drive in after the stage so after you have added and incubated your iodine, the next thing you do, of course, is rinse with water. But then you're going to add a decolorizer. Now, gram staining is a differential stain. So that means it will differentiate between two different groups of bacteria. So the decolorizing agent is an alcohol solution. Now, if you have your stain that is really driven into the structure of the multilayer peptidoglycan, if you decolorize correctly, that crystal violet will not leave the, the cell membrane, the cell wall, I mean, okay? Whereas the gram negative, it has a really thin peptidoglycan layer. So just like how alcohol removes marker, it's the same thing. Since you have a very thin peptidoglycan layer, the alcohol will actually remove the stain and at the end of this step, if it's done correctly, at the end of decolorizing, the gram negative will appear colorless. And it's colorless because the alcohol will wash away whatever little stain that is there because it's a very thin layer of peptidoglycan. But the gram positive will be purple and it will stay purple if you've done it right because it has those multi-layer of peptidoglycan where you have a lot of that stain that is really driven in by that mordant into the peptidoglycan layer. So it will be purple. Now for those that have lost the stain, you actually have to add a counter stain so you can see the organism. Because if you look under the microscope, yeah, the gram positive will be purple. 
but the gram negative would be colorless and you wouldn't be able to see it. So you don't know if it's positive or negative, so whether it's positive or negative, you still have to add the stain, whatever the whatever it is. So the counter stain is saffronin. Saffronin has more of a pink fuchsia type color. So you'll apply it to the slides, whether you're gram positive or negative, and anything that has lost the stain during the decolorization step will take in that counter stain saffronin. So at the end of gram staining, the gram positive will be purple and the gram negative will be more pink or fuchsia color. And remember, the reason why is because the gram positive has a thick peptidoglycan layer that that crystal violet stain can really stick to and that iodine can really drive in, whereas the gram negative has a really thin layer of peptidoglycan and the alcohol will just take that off and it will lose the stain. So what would an organism look like if it's gram positive or gram negative? Let me show you. All right, so this is an example. So see how this organism here is purple? It's purple because it is gram positive. Okay, gram positive retains that first stain of crystal violet and will have that color. Will not, it will not lose its color after decolorizing if you've done it properly. Notice the gram negative here has more of a pink fuchsia color because it lost the actual primary stain crystal violet because of that thin peptidoglycan layer. So since it lost the color after decolorizing, it will pick or take up that saffronin, which is the counter stain. So at the end of the staining procedure, the gram positive will be purple and the gram negative will be pink. Okay, quiz time. Let's see if you know these answers. First one. The cell wall of bacteria is called, is it phospholipid, lipopolysaccharide, peptidoglycan, or lipotechoic acids? So the bacteria cell wall is also called peptidoglycan. Another name for it is murine. You may see it either way, okay? Next one. The peptidoglycan is composed of what? Select all that applies. So we have NAG, LPS, NAM, phospholipids or none of the above. If you picked NAG and NAM, you're correct. Okay, so NAG, NAM alternating subunits is what actually makes up the peptidoglycan cell wall. Okay, so porins are present in the cell envelope of, do we find porins in gram positives, negatives, or both? Remember, porins are found on an outer membrane, right? So who has it? The gram negative. The gram negative has porins. All right, this question. Which organism have or has their nag nam chains that are bridged, not cross-linked? All right, so remember they have to have thick peptidoglycan layers. Um, where, that's typically where you see the bridging. So if you pick gram positive, you're right. All right, next question. Which organism has two membranes in their cell envelope? Okay, so remember there are a group of bacteria that has two membranes, an outer and an inner. Who has that? If you pick gram negative, you are correct. All right, next question. What is the color of a gram negative organism directly following the decolorization step. So after you add the alcohol and you rinse it off, what color is the gram negative? Is it colorless, pink, purple, or none of the above? Hopefully you picked colorless, okay? Because remember that the gram negative has a very thin peptidoglycan layer and it easily loses its color once decolorizing. So hopefully you got 100. Um, please comment down below and let me know how well you did on the quiz. Please let me know what you learned. Hopefully you did get that 100. Um, so until next time, I will see you.